<laughs> Welcome back, Antoine Christopher here. Taster's choice in hand as always. Great to see you guys and before I even begin, I want to tell you thanks for the last questions last episode. Really appreciate it. Before I even get to the question that I actually got, which I'm very happy for, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification, share and hit the notification button so I can be in touch with you and you can be in touch with me. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, me and Mr. Borsellino here, we've become very acquainted. Still finishing up on the battle of the background. This stage is very simple. I already know what I want it to look like. I'm just uh, hashing out the details and the stuff like that as well. So, um, to get to the question now, because I got a question from Elizabeth from Texas, right? So she was nice enough to send me this question, and I think it's a very good question. That's why I'm actually happy that I'm addressing it. The question is, how do I manage to stay motivated when people don't appreciate my work? First of all, I want to, that section of the, is a loaded question, just that little section, I'm going to tell you why. You shouldn't need people, all right? It's great to have people appreciate. Everybody appreciates art. And the ones that don't, they have their own issues. That's a fact. But everybody appreciates art. So you shouldn't look for them to appreciate your work. You should design and create within yourself. And then the appreciation will come from those who appreciate art. So that's something you really can't control. All right. So draw for yourself. Draw for you. Because you're pitching the subject. You're pitching everything around you. Everything around you. Okay. Now, I, she says she gets very sad and depressed when I don't get paid for my talent. Well, first of all, we're artists. It, it's uh, being an artist. That's one thing you have to understand. Some of us have extra. Some of us have other jobs. Some of us, you know, do side jobs. Some of us, I remember when I even started. I used to draw for like nothing. I used to draw for mediocre just to get paid, just to feel like I got rewarded. Okay, that's normal in the beginning with everything you do. It's like a, it's like an, a starving actor. They work in in the um, hospitality industry. They serve. Every, I'm guaranteeing you 80 to 90% of the people in restaurants are all expiring actors. And that's what they do while they go on to the, the audition because it's a flexible job, you know? And it allows you to leave, come back, and all that sort of stuff. So don't get depressed about that stuff, okay? Build your, build your, build your art up, build your talent up, hone in on your skills, create that ability. Do that. Focus on that. We focus on finding who you are as an artist, your technique, your style, what sets you out from other artists. Because a lot, there's tons of artists do. Some do really hyper-realistic, some do in between, some have the comic book style, some have the anime style. Work on your craft, what you want to see, how you want to represent when some, when a client comes to you to do something, a portrait or whatnot, work on your individual style. And don't worry about getting paid, you will get paid. We as artists have evolved. Okay, we're also business people now too. Like I have a set price for what I do, and that's it. That's my set price. Now, of course, with friends and this and that, you want to, you know, be rewarded. You want to at least get, but you, you're not gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have your your boundaries. Okay, so Elizabeth says, I get very sad and depressed when I don't get paid for my talent. What do I do? Should I go on painting or leave my passion? Any advice? <laughs> that. It's going to take some time. I got to get you on that one. So what I'm going to do is grab my coffee <laughs> and I'm going to sit down and explain this one to you. How my process and what I do to keep me going. <laughs> All right. So let's deal with the depression part. You shouldn't get depressed at all. Art's not, art's not created around um, depression. Yes, everybody has their moments. Believe me, I've had mine. I've had, you know, a lot of stuff happen in my life. Some, something that even stopped me from drawing for a while. So I know, I know the depression part. Um, and I know about the struggles of trying to make money with it. And, you know, you draw something in, and uh, you, don't get, you don't feel like you got rewarded for it. Because, I mean, it's great to get paid. But people don't understand. And I think I've mentioned this before. When you draw, everything you draw is a piece of you. So even now, even when I get paid, like I had Jim Carrey sign the original and all that. And when, you know, that's sold and meeting him was, believe me, was really something I was honored to meet him. It's like, it's like I was saying, Jim Carrey wrote this and he wrote, I wouldn't erase a thing, Jim Carrey. The reason why is 
Every brushstroke I've made on this, everything, helps shape, not only the drawing, but it helps shape who I am as an artist. Everything represents me as an artist. You see, so you have to think like that. If I was just to do it and be depressed as you wrote in your question, and not and feel like, oh, I'm depressed, I'm not getting paid, no. But after I created it, that was joy for me. That was my payment. The monetary gain is is is, is what comes from it. And I'd still have a little sadness if it, when I sell it. I mean, it's gone. So everything we do as artists is a piece of us. So, and believe me, there are some artworks I've done back in my past that I was like, oh man, I wish I could take that back. But at the time, at the time, not only did I need the money, but I felt good knowing my work was getting out there. People were appreciating it and it started to grow. People heard about it. I got more questions. I'm even starting this YouTube channel because of it, because everybody was always asking me, How come you don't, you're so private, you don't show yourself and this and that. And that's how this started. So Elizabeth, don't feel like that. My advice, my advice, and I've said it before to you, is keep creating your artwork to represent you, your own style. Pull from everybody. Let everything that happens in your life, even if it's negative, use it as a, as, as and you've heard this before, it's so cliche, use that as a force to push you forward. And it, it is so true. Um, but don't ever let anything stop you from drawing. I've been down that road too. And it's not a, it's not a, 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 it's not a pleasant road for anybody that's creative. Nothing should stop your creativity. That should be forever growing, ever expanding. We create with the universe. I pull from everywhere, everywhere. So love, love is very important. Make sure you have good people around you too. Make sure you have good people around you. Choose your friends wisely, you know, especially because I need my feng shui. My place is always clean because for me, when I, when I draw, I want to draw in a clean environment. Some artists have it all messed up and Paint, hip, nah, nah, mm -mm, that's not me. I need it to be clean. I need my feng shui. So again, create the environment you want to help you to create what you want to create. It's all about creating your environment to help you do what you want. And that's part of honing in on your skill too. Not only the actual practical doing it, but it, pull from everything around you. Have the pleasant thoughts, have the negative thoughts. You know, some of my best work, like I said, came out of my, my negative thoughts. When I did Michael Jackson, the one with the gold and silver, let me tell you something, that was one of the greatest moments in my life, and I there's no way I'm sharing that on YouTube. <laughs> Unlike some people, <laughs> I got some private stuff too. But I can tell you this, it was it was like one of the worst times that I've been through too. So stay positive. That's the only way I can create. But I don't want you to become depressed because you're not selling your work or you're not you don't feel like you're getting no, no, don't. It will come. Like I said, it's very important to hone in on your skills and become a better artist. You know, I, and, I, and I, you know, it's funny, you should, I, I should tell you this. I was listening to, um, and not to go into it, but The Secret, um, Les Brown. Um, there's a lot of motivational speakers out there that I love to listen to while I draw. Believe it or not, um, I call him, I think he's Mr. Moran on YouTube. I love hearing him. He's such a funny guy. He, he hears me. He speaks to me when I when that man talks. So listen to that stuff while you dress. Not me. I, I like listening to, you know, I wouldn't say opera, but I do get a little. I like the slow songs. I like things that make me think. Going to my future. Uh, there's certain things that do that I do that you know help me to paint. So listen to it. Blast it if you have to blast it. But. Use it, like I said, use everything. Use your everyday life as a motivation to push you forward. And everybody says that, but I'm, I'm telling you, do it. All right? And another thing, don't, don't talk to everybody. You know what's best for you. Okay, you, you know what's best for you. It's like I tell people, say, how do, how do I lose weight? You know if you put that french fry in your mouth, you're gonna, it's going to add up to calories. You know. Okay, you know if you drink that glass of wine, it's going to add up to calories. Yeah, once in a while, it's great to celebrate. But celebrate after you've earned it, after you've lost 10 pounds or 5 pounds, whatever your goal is. 
Don't celebrate before because you know if you drink that, you know. And the same thing with your art. You know what makes you happy and what makes you want to create. Sometimes I don't even feel like creating. Sometimes I don't even want to touch my board. But you know what? When I go there, I put my hand in it, I grab that color, I start doing what I do, all that other stuff disappears. And that's what I want you to do, Elizabeth. Just take my advice. You may not feel like doing it, but do what you love. Go and touch it, put a color down, even if it's for five minutes. Feel the pastels, feel the paint, feel the, the paint brush. Believe me, it, <laughs> it's gonna change your thinking. And you're going to say, yeah, this makes me happy. And you're going to continue doing it. All right. So, Elizabeth, don't be depressed. All right. Do what you do best, your art. All right. You know it better than anybody else. Create your style. Develop your style. All that good stuff. I'm going to try to get this done. I got to get this done for you guys because I know it seems like it's taking long, but it really isn't. I'm only on my fourth episode, so give me a break. And everybody else, <laughs> let me know if I'm doing okay. Like, subscribe, comment. Hit the notification button. I need some feedback here because if you want to see more of what I do or less of what I do, let me know. All right, I'm all here for you. This is Antoine Christopher signing off with Coffee and Hand, as always. <laughs> Take care, bye. <laughs>